What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we have a huge bodybuilding news video for you guys today, which includes Horse MD five weeks out of his pro debut, can he challenge Chris Bumstead, Akeem Williams 11 weeks out, and why his coach thinks he's the best bodybuilder on the planet, William Bonac recovers from surgery and starts his first off-season under Chad Nichols, Olympia point standings update, New York Pro official scorecards released and how things change between prejudging and finals and how that impacted Justin Rodriguez and Amir Omarajic. Fabian Rabia switches from classic to open just four weeks out. Is this a good or a bad move for him? Justin Rodriguez fires AJ Sims, but who's coaching him now? Physique updates from Ian Valier, plus Keon Pearson and Hassan Mustafa. Are they actually ready early? All that plus much more come out in this video, guys. I hope you enjoy it. What's up, desktopers? Now, before I get into this one, I want to encourage you guys, if you guys like and appreciate this content, please give this video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up from myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, which includes bodybuilding news, interviews, contest coverage, plus much more. So make sure you do subscribe. Now let's kick it off with Justin Rodriguez firing his coach, AJ Sims from Cement Factory. New coach is George Farrah, who actually coached Blessing and Wadaboo to his, both his wins of Indy Pro and Ever New York Pro this year, which Justin Rodriguez actually competed in. And really, many people were let down by the way Justin Rodriguez actually looked. Now, something was suggested by Guy Sistanino on RX Muscle and also on the latest, I believe, Bodybuilding and Bollocks or Bro Chat, whichever one it was, that actually just came out. He said that, you know, one contest he actually, you know, fired a coach. I think they did, I don't know how many contests they did together. And he fired his coach and many actually went and got his bloods done and realized he was taking fake gear. And he suggested this could be something that actually happened. Now, definitely could be the case because Justin Rodriguez still looked pretty great in, at the Boston Pro and the Arnold Classic. And his physique has really sort of gone backwards since then. Now, I think conditioning was the major issue. I don't know what happened there. Maybe he was flattening out too much. They tried to fill him up and it just wasn't working because his body's sort of tired. But I'm not too sure, but he's working with George Farrow now. And you can see here, uh, this is a little quote from his post that he put up. He said, first stop, Mr. Olympia 22, along with the mastermind and great human being, George Farrow. There's still a lot uh, to do, Justin, believe when I tell you that. So I don't get what that last bit meant, but obviously he's working with George Farrow. So let me know in the comments, do you think that's a good move or a bad move switching from AJ Sims to George Farrow? In our next story, we're discussing Akeem Williams at 11 weeks out, looking pretty damn amazing. That side chest, you can really tell the outer quad looks fantastic there. And when that gets in like crazy shape, it looks absolutely insane. We saw that at Mr. Olympia and a few other contests that he's done. On the left side, where he's doing the side tricep there, the quad just doesn't look as good. The side leg just isn't as impressive. But the upper body, you can see the chest is thick as anything. Arms are huge. Shoulders obviously pretty damn big as well. So he's not lacking anything. And the 11 weeks out, that's pretty damn impressive. Now, his coach, Justin Miller, posted this up and the caption is, started working with Akeem again. This is Akeem this week, just over 11 weeks out from the 2022 Tampa Pro. I'm excited for this show for many reasons. Akeem is currently sitting in the 280s, bigger and leaner than he was 11 weeks out from his win at the Puerto Rico Pro in 2021 when we worked together. He's way better now than 11 weeks out from that win, in fact. I'm also seeing a more focused Akeem. To say this guy's dangerous bodybuilder would be a huge understatement. If he turns up looking the way I know he can, it won't matter who's competing in the show or any show. Akeem is the best bodybuilder in the world, in my opinion. The greatness is already there. My goal is to simply help him bring it into fruition. Honored to be working with you again, big man. Let's go win some shows. So Justin Miller is extremely confident in Akeem's ability this year and saying that he thinks he's the best bodybuilder in the world is a pretty bold statement. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Can Akeem Williams really, like I suppose, find that greatness and actually, you know, win or go close to winning a Mr. Olympia in the future? Let me know what you think in the comments below about that because obviously, remember a few years ago, he finished sixth at Mr. Olympia. He got first call out. He actually came on desktop bodybuilding and said that's his goal to get first call out. And he achieved that. Not many guys, I think, really believed that he's able to actually achieve a first call out because before that, he's really placing, I think, like 10th and downwards at the Olympia. So hopefully he can do that. I would absolutely love to see him right up there battling for the Mr. Olympia win. 
In our next story, a guy that could potentially battle up there if he comes in crazy shape, and it looks like he's getting towards that, and that's Hassan Mustafa. I don't know what show he's doing this year, but obviously he's pretty close because in these latest photos, he's looking so much drier and leaner than he's looked in the past. Now, the glutes aren't fully in yet, but you can see there's some sorts of lines there. In the back double bicep especially, he looks really dry through his back and his triceps and everything. And then on that side tricep, you can tell there's a ton of thickness through his body. Like his waist is really tight. His arms are enormous. Chest is pretty thick and his side leg is crazy. As we know, he's sort of known for his legs. So Hassan Mustafa is definitely bringing something. If you know what show he's doing this year, let me know in the comments below. And let me know how you think he'll do. Will he qualify for the 2022 Mr. Olympia by winning a show by points? Or do you think he won't qualify at all? In our next story, we're discussing William Bonac locked into his Olympia prep after his gyno surgery. He put up this bicep training video and he put the caption, a short biceps workout this afternoon, Monday 23rd of May, I will start my off-season prep. I have not been in the gym that often for five weeks uh, on a row due to my surgery. Um, last week, I slowly started building up to training uh, just three times a week. This week will be five times in a week. This is the first time I'm really doing an off-season prep with my coach, uh, the diet doc, which is Chad Nichols, who was obviously big, is Big Rami's trainer and formerly Ronnie Coleman's uh, trainer. He uh, sent me my plan like a month ago, and then he goes on to say a few more things as well about bringing his A game to the 2022 Mr. Olympia. And many people are excited for it because had he had that gyno fix prior to the Arnold Classic, he may have won another Arnold Classic title and he looked, looked absolutely fantastic. And many people debated maybe he should have won that Arnold Classic against Brandon Curry. But I'm very excited to see what William Bonac brings for 2022, doing his first off-season under Chad Nichols. And then he's going to have plenty of time to bring him to the Olympia. So let me know how you think William Bonac can do in 2022 about Mr. Olympia. Our next story is an interesting one because it's about Fabian Rabia. If you don't know this guy, he's a guy that's been pro for a few years. I don't think he's actually competed as a classic physique pro. But he's always been one of those guys on social media that's looked fantastic and people want to see him up on stage and, you know, going for that Mr. Olympia. He may have competed once actually as a classic physique pro, qualified and never actually got on stage at the Olympia. But I love this dude's physique and it seems like he's actually switching from classic to open. He put up this post and said, just three days after I decided to switch to open category, we have a good result waiting to take more pounds while maintaining the quality and cutting them. So a little bit confusing. I think it's a little bit lost in translation there, but... Obviously, he's switching to the open category. Uh, just four weeks out, or just prior to four weeks out, he decided to make that switch. And he's looking way bigger. Maybe he realized he wasn't going to make the weight cap, but I'm very impressed with this guy's physique. If he can continue to add size to his physique, he's going to look absolutely fantastic. And I mean, he looks fantastic now, but I mean, in terms of doing well as an open pro, and these latest updates are really sort of shocking me with how much mass and quality mass is actually added to his physique, because it's actually looking like dense sort of muscle. Uh, looks like established muscle and he's got the shape you know he's got the classic shape i think he looks amazing in every shot and especially that front door bicep that he posts over and over again now which show is he actually going to do there's a few shows uh, in the timeline that he said i don't know if he's announced it prior but there's uh the yamamoto pro uh, which is in puerto rico and then the monsters in pro which is in korea so i don't know which one he's doing if you know in the comments let me know and uh, i think he's going to do pretty well at least as an open pro, I think he would absolutely dominate as a classic physique pro, but I can't wait to see him on that open stage and hopefully he continues to add muscle for years to come and he's battling at Olympia because I love this dude's physique. Now, another guy sort of in the same vein, Marcelo DeAngelis, aka Horse MD, five weeks out physique update, looking absolutely crazy. This side chest, it's almost unbelievable that he's doing classic physique. He's 111 kilos, 244 pounds. I don't know what his weight cap is. I know that he actually turned pro in the open um, at one of those Brazilian shows, but he turned pro in the open just because the weight cap of the classic physique was you know, a little bit too low as an amateur. He has a few more pounds to work with as a pro classic physique guy. So obviously he's taking advantage of that because you look at his side chest and his hamstring is, looks ridiculous. His arms, you know, when you compare it to like a Chris Bumstead, and I'm going to ask the question, can he beat Chris Bumstead at some stage? His arms are definitely bigger than uh, Chris Bumstead's. His chest is maybe sort of equivalent around the same, but uh, where he falls down a little bit is that back shot. But I don't know how that's actually going to look when he's like fully shredded down um, because here you can tell he's in good shape, but he's not fully shredded here. 
He actually reminds me a little bit of uh, Chris Bumstead's brother-in-law, Ian Vallier, on that back double bicep. And um, hopefully he's able to sort of, I think it, you know, this shot as well, he's slightly shadowed too as well. And obviously he's not the size of, a, of an Ian Vallier, obviously. But um, he'll need to sort of bring that waist in a little bit more and just get that really detailed. And I think it can still look really impressive because Chris Bumstead sort of had the same issue, but he really brought his back up. But let me know what you think about Horse MD and how you think he'll go. Can he actually challenge Chris Bumstead this year or in one of the future years coming up? Let me know what you think in the comments below on that. Now, Keon Pearson has posted some pretty impressive photos up on his Instagram page. He's weighing 205.4 pounds, as you can see here. He's posted front and back shots. I'll go through the back shots first, where you know he's looking in pretty decent shape. You got to say, 11 weeks out of that Tampa Pro, because the knock on Keon has sort of been two things. His legs at times have been sort of a knock on him and also just the conditioning when he comes to shows. I think he comes in good conditioning in a lot of shows without being inside out peeled. And that's what people want to see from him. They want to see that really dense, hard look to his whole physique. And it looks like he might be bringing it this year because by judging these back shots, you can see sort of the outlines of the glutes. Now his legs in terms of size, it's hard to tell if he's added much size on his legs. But then you go to these shots and you look at the front double bicep and he looks absolutely like really grainy hard here. He says he's flat in the photo, but uh, I think flat looks good on Keon, to be honest. I think this is what he needs to do to get in crazy condition. And he's out there training with Martin Fitzwater, who I actually did an interview with a couple of days ago, which will be out in the coming days. Uh, it's an awesome interview, so make sure you do check that out because he talks a lot about training with Keon and you know prepping, being pre prepped by Branch Warren out there. And it sounds like a really cool environment. Um, so make sure you you know subscribe and check that out. But I think Keon is going to do very, very well. Um, I think he's out for redemption. He's doing the 212 at the Tampa Pro. I believe he's doing the 212 at least anyway. I think he's way too big for the Classic uh, at this point. And uh, I think he's going to do obviously very well there. Probably will win that show depending who shows up. And then I think he'll come into the Olympia with a lot of momentum. And I think we're going to see the best ever Keon Pearson. Our next physique update is Ian Valier, eight weeks out of Vancouver Pro. And he looks pretty damn great. Now, I think if Ian can bring a little bit more separation, a little bit more deep detail, he comes in great condition, but he sort of lacks a little bit of detail in a few of those muscles. If he can bring that up, if I think, you know, on his back double bicep, I would love to see him actually pick those elbows up a little bit as well. And I think that would sort of bring his back out a bit more because his elbows are often below his shoulders, which typically closes guys' backs off a little bit. But, um, but Ian looks super impressive by this video as well that Patrick Tua posted up. Uh, Patrick said that he's 279 pounds and mentioned a few things about Ian sort of being a bit heavier than last time. So I can't wait to see how Ian does at that Vancouver Pro and how he does at the Olympia. I think he can move up into that top six if he makes those subtle improvements to his physique because he has a ton of mass. I don't think it always shows through in photos of him just by himself. I think when he stands next to other guys, you see how big Ian actually is. And in our last story, we're doing a Mr. Olympia qualification point standings update. And I'm going to show you guys the New York Pro scorecards as well to see how things flip-flop between 5th and 6th place at that 2022 New York Pro on the weekend. So when we look at the list, so I'll go through the top points getters. So leading the Olympia point standings is Justin Rodriguez on 26. He went into the weekend on 21. By placing 5th, he got 5 points because the tiered shows. So New York Pro is actually a tier two show where second you get eight points and then all the way down to fifth you get five points and then for sixth you get zero points. So I'll talk about that in a second. Steve Kuklo is on 21 points. He was actually tied with Justin Rodriguez going into that New York Pro. Theo Laguerra on 14 points. Amir Omarajic on 13 points. Now Amir Omarajic, had he placed fifth, which he was actually fifth after pre-judging, Justin Rodriguez jumped him at finals. Had he actually placed fifth there, he would have been on 18 points. It would have been Justin Rodriguez on 21 points, tied with Steve Kuklo, and then Amir Omarajic would have been third, outright third. And now he's actually in fourth and five points less, which is huge in the whole scheme of things. Then we've got Quinton Araya on 11, Max Charles on 11, Ian Valier on 10, Andrea Presti on 10, who's competing this weekend, I believe, as well. Vita, uh, Hugo Boff, you got uh, on eight, Akeem Williams on seven, Rolly Winkler, seven, Joe Seaman on seven, and then you got a whole list of other guys as well below that uh, from anywhere from one to six. So let me know what you think about that. Do you think Amir or Mirajic, I actually believe he should have placed fifth at that last show. No disrespect to Justin Rodriguez, but whatever was happening with his prep just wasn't working or his body was just sort of rejecting things. Um, I thought he actually should have placed fifth and that would have changed things up a lot because Justin might've been forced to compete again. 
Being on 26 points, I doubt he's going to be caught, uh, especially because, you know, Steve Kuklo could do another show and actually qualify and then he'd be off the point standings. But there's a lot of guys that are still competing, like uh, Theo Liguera, Amir Omarajic might be still competing, and Quentin Araya. Uh, you've got, obviously, Ian Valier. You've got Max Charles, who still was probably competing, Andrea Presti. There's a whole bunch of names, and there's tons of guys down the list as well. Um, Charles Griffin's down there. Tony Burton, who's competing this weekend. Sergio Oliva Jr. There's a lot of guys still to qualify, and a lot of guys that could pick up a ton of points because of obviously the tier system of the point standings, and there's still plenty of shows to come. You know, you've got Toronto Pro, uh, Tampa Pro, uh, the Europa Pro. Um, you've got tons of shows where it actually has these higher tiered shows. So these are tier two shows, and you get a lot of points for that. You get a couple second places, and you've already got 10 points. You've gone straight to 26 points. So I think that, you know, Steve Kukla will probably still have to compete, and I think Justin Rodriguez will probably be safe because I imagine a few of these guys will probably qualify by winning shows and they'll be off the point standings list. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think Amir Omarajic should have actually got fifth of that show and then picked up five points and Justin Rodriguez may have been forced to compete again close to the Olympia? So that's it for my bodybuilding news video. If you guys liked and appreciated this video, please give this video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding. Also check out hdmuscle.com, enter the codes desktop. You'll save yourself 10% on their entire product range, including supplements and apparel and all their accessories. And their products are absolutely amazing. So make sure you do check them out. If they have a discount already, if you use desktop or click the link in the description below, you'll save yourself an additional 10% too. And it helps me out too. So that's it for me. For Xavier Wills, Desktop Bodybuilding, we are out. Thank you.